What's going on everyone and welcome to part 3 of tutorial series on API Gateway authorization. In the previous tutorial we have created user, domain and resource server within Cognito pool. Now in this tutorial we are going to create an app client and we will set it up. So uh, before we dive into today's tutorial, I want to thank Isaac Montaigne for his valuable contribution to support the content. Thank you so much, Isaac. And moving along. So as I mentioned, we are going to create an app client and we are going to set it up. So what exactly is app client and why we are going to create it within user pool, right? So an app is an entity within a user pool that has permission to call unauthenticated APIs. So basically the app clients that we will create will be given a unique ID and an optional secret key to access the user pool. So ideally we will use the unique ID that is provided to the app client to access the user pool at later point of time. Right. So Assuming that you already have logged in into AWS management console and once you are there navigate to Cognito. So again today uh, we are only going to deal with Cognito. So navigate to Cognito. Now once you are within Amazon Cognito click on manage user pools. And from user pools, we need to click on API auth. So this is the user pool that we have created in the part one of this tutorial series. So click on API auth. Now, as I mentioned earlier that we are going to create app client. So click on app clients from the left panel. And right now uh, it's empty. So click on add an app client. Now here uh, it requires a name. So I will say API auth. You can set this refresh token expiration uh, in days. So by default it's 30 and uncheck the generate client secret checkbox because we will not require client secret over here and leave the rest of the option as it is. And once you are done with that, click on create app client. So here we have successfully created the app client. It's quite straightforward. So here, uh, this is the unique ID uh, that we are going to use to access user pool at later point of time. So once we are done with app client, click on app client settings from the left panel under app integration. So this screen will appear when and only when you have created the app client. So what it is asking here is what identity providers and OR 2.0 settings should be used for your app clients, right? So this is dependent on the app client. You can also create multiple app clients from here. You can say add another app client. And once you add there, that app client will be reflected here. So right now, as you can see, the API auth app client that we have just created is reflecting over here, right? So moving along. So it says enabled identity providers. And what does it description say is each of your app clients can use different identity providers and OAuth 2.0 settings. You must enable at least one identity provider for each app client. So under enabled identity providers, we have only one option saying that Cognito user pool. So there is only one identity provider, right? So you can also enable other uh, identity providers by clicking on identity providers under federation. So this will uh, allow you to configure and enable external or third party identity providers. So since they are not enabled or set up yet, so that's the reason they are not showing up on this screen. And there is only one default option that is Cognito user pool, right? So we are going to select Cognito user pool over here. 
now moving along within sign in and sign out urls so it's asking callback url and sign out url so what is callback url so here we are going to use amazon hosted user interface to login right so after login where it should redirect us so for example after login it should redirect me to google.com or localhost right so that url you have to enter as the callback url so what i will do is i will simply uh, enter https www.google.com but you can enter whichever url you want amazon cognito to redirect to right and then we have sign out urls so it's it means that uh, when you sign out uh, where it should redirect you so you can enter that url so callback url is mandatory sign out url is optional if you want you can enter if you don't want it's okay so i'm going to leave it blank now coming to the next part that is oauth 2.0 so what does it say is select the OAuth flows and scopes enabled for this app. Now under that OAuth 2.0, we have allowed OAuth flows and allowed OAuth scopes. What is uh, allowed OAuth flows? It's nothing but the way for obtaining user pool tokens like access token, refresh token, based on which grant type or option we select from here, right? So based on uh, which option we select from these three that is authorization code grant implicit grant or client credentials right so now we, uh, you might be thinking that what are these tokens and how it's going to be used with api authorization so in order to access the api successfully after configuring authorization we will require access token to access or invoke the api endpoint successfully right so yeah uh, now coming to these options that is authorization code grant implicit grant and client credentials so what are they so uh, let me uh, try to explain you why this diagram so basically this diagram does not include all the components that is involved in the authentication or the code fetching or the user token fetching process uh, but uh, it is only intended to show you that how it work at the very very high level right so within authorization code what happens is uh, the user logged in via hosted sign in user interface so that is what we are going to use so we are going to use that hosted sign in ui the user uh, logged in via that using username and password so the user that we have created in the previous tutorial and what happens is Cognito returns the authorization code. Now within authorization code grant, there are two steps. So the first step is to fetch the authorization code. And then using that authorization code, uh, again, we have to make another post request. And then uh, Cognito will return user pool tokens like uh, access token, for example, right? So that's how uh, authorization code grant work. Now coming to the second thing that is implicit grant. So with an implicit grant, uh, it's a one step. So user login via hosted UI with username and password and Cognito returns directly user pool tokens and there is no uh, authorization step, right? So here there are two steps, uh, but within implicit grant, there is only one step involved. Now the third option was client credentials. So this is basically for machine to machine communication. So to use client credential, uh, we have to generate client secret uh, while we were creating the app client, right? So uh, this is how all the three options work. So if you want to explore more and understand how these code grant work, uh, I have the link in the description so you can go through that. So. It contains the in-depth explanation. So please do refer that. Okay, so uh, moving along. So authorization code grant. So ideally this is the preferred method for authorizing users or authorizing end users. Since user pool tokens are not directly exposed to the end user, right? So 
as I just shown you that uh, it include two steps, right? So one is uh, fetching the authorization code and then using that authorization code to fetch access token. Now with an implicit grant, the access token is exposed to the user directly, right? So uh, use implicit grant when there is a specific reason that the authorization code grant can't be used, right? Because as I said, in the implicit grant user pool tokens are exposed directly to the end user, right? And then the third is the client credentials. Now the client credential flow is used in machine to machine communication, as I said earlier. Now uh, with this, you can request an access token to access your own resource. And one should use this flow when your application is requesting the token on its own behalf and not on the behalf of the user, right? So at that point of time, you should use client credentials. But for now, we will move on with authorization code grant, right? Uh, later on, I will also show you how implicit grant uh, work and how we can fetch access token using implicit grant, right? So that's a, about allowed OAuth flows. Now, um, moving along with uh, OAuth, scopes that is allowed OAuth scopes right so now within OAuth scopes we have to choose one or more of the following OAuth scopes to specify the access privileges that can be requested for access tokens right so you can select uh, multiple or at least you have to select one right so for example if we select phone the phone scope grants access to the phone number and phone number verified claims right so this scope can only be requested with the open ID scope and same goes with email too, right? So it is also requested with the open ID scope. So if, if I select phone, then I also have to select open ID, right? So then the third is aws.cognito.signinuser.admin. So this scope grants access to Amazon Cognito user pool API operation that require access tokens such as uh, verify user attribute, for example, right? And finally, we have profile scope. So ideally, it grants access to all user attributes that are readable by the client, right? But in our case, I'm going to only select open ID scope. Now, what is this allowed custom scopes? So if you remember then in the previous tutorial, we have created this scopes under resources. So if I go back to resource server, so let me copy this URL first so that I don't have to type it again. So go to resource servers. So as you can see, json.write, json.read, right? So this is the scopes that we have created in the previous tutorial. So that's what, uh, uh, you are seeing within the app client settings over here, right? So I will enable this callback URL authorization code grant open ID. So now uh, you can also select custom scope, but right now I'm going to leave it as it is and then click on save changes. So now this setting has been saved successfully, right? So in case if I uncheck authorization code grant and select client credentials right and select one of the custom scope and if i try to save it it's going to throw an error right saying that client secret does not exist so as i said client credentials require a client secret to be generated while we are creating the app client right so checking authorization code grant back oauth scope as open id right and where is the save button so let me reload this oh the settings has been uh, saved successfully so then uh, you can see here uh, there is hosted ui right so this is something we are going to use to fetch access tokens or authorization code, right? So this is the hosted UI by Amazon. So uh, we will have a look later on this. So well, uh, that's it for this tutorial, but uh, where are those tokens that I was talking about and how to fetch them? Well, that is something coming up in the next tutorial, 
right and till that time as usual if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time